How's it going y'all? My name is Doe and today's video is all about what weapons I suggest building in Dauntless, especially for beginner players and also these weapons carry over all the way to the end game. And some of the weapons are pretty much the meta in the late game currently. Before that I have two things to say. The first is if you want to input a flare code or a code in general in a Dauntless, the way to do that is you have to go to the playdowns.com website and then go to the top right corner and click log in, log in of course, and then scroll down and you'll see redeem code. That's where the codes go just so y'all aware. And the second thing is this. Okay, back to the video, and we're also on the first weapon I suggest, which is gonna be the Nasher Hammer. The reason I suggest this is because if you play the very first fight in the game properly, which is Lesser Nasher, and you break the parts, such as the legs, tail, head, arms, if you break enough parts, you can go to Ramsgate after your very first fight, and then craft the hammer. And then you can use this hammer to kill Embermane with. So I believe it's Lesser Embermain, and the reason that's a good thing is because the hammer is phenomenally easy to boop with. All you have to do is stand still, and on the PC you hold right click, and on the controller you hold triangle. I have no idea what the Xbox people do, I, th that controller has always been weird to me, but it, whatever triangle is on the PS4, hit the same button on Xbox, it's the top button, I don't know, I'm sorry. But that's what you do, and that makes the fight so much easier because Embermane is a very boop heavy fight. So, interrupting it whenever he's doing that little run attack, that's a boop. And that is super easy to do with the hammer, and that is why I suggest it. On top of that, the hammer's kind of broken right now. It's gonna get nerfed, I'm almost guaranteeing it, but it's busted right now, so it's gonna make a kill times really fast as well. After you kill Embermane a couple times, you will be able to form the Embermane sword if it doesn't require tails, because the hammer can't cut tails but I'm pretty sure it didn't whenever I crafted it. Anyway, the Embermane Sword is very good for breaking parts. The unique equip is very nice for that because the seventh hit in a row deals 100% extra part damage, which is insanely big for the early game because you need to break some parts to craft the weapons and to level them up at certain tiers of progression. So this is a very good weapon starting out. And on top of that, the next ish behemoth fight will be Lesser Boreas. I think Jurassic is actually next, but Whenever you fight Lesser Boreas, use this Embermane Sword to break as many parts as you can, and once you do that, you can use the parts to craft a Boreas weapon. Now, I suggest making a Boreas Sword, because when it comes to most weapons, they normally have the same unique equip, but for the Boreas weapons, they have different ones, and the sword has the best Boreas unique equip, which is like this. Using a special continually generates frost sprites that cause your next attack to deal 30 bonus damage and minor frost damage, max 4 sprites. That's very nice. So basically whenever you pop overdrive, which is your, your Q or your special on the sword, and you'll basically just get more damage, which is very helpful in this game. Killing things faster is always a plus, and it is very nice to do. Now, the only downside I can think of for this weapon is frost proc. So frost proc is basically whenever a behemoth is slowed, and it's a love-hate thing, right? Either you love it or you hate it, or you just love and hate it, which I just hate it because I hate slowed behemoths, it messes up my timing, but that is the thing you kind of have to trade off for, because this frost weapon is very nice since you'll be fighting Hellion soon-ish after doing this, and Hellion has some of the best weapons in the entire game currently. Actually, pretty much five of, the, five of its weapons are meta right now. The only exception is Axe. The best Axe, in my opinion, is going to be the Rift Axe. Everything else, Hellion is going to be best in slot. And these weapons are very strong for a couple reasons. So the first reason is that it has two power slots for basically every weapon type. The second reason is it has overpower as a cell stat on the weapon, which is a very good cell in this game. Every behemoth can be affected by overpower, it's just nice in general. And the third main reason is because of the unique equip, which mostly benefits faster weapons, but it still helps out the slow hitting, slow hitting weapons a little bit. And that effect is that the 8th hit in quick succession deals 100 bonus damage and major blaze damage. And for clarity, I want to say that different Hellion weapons have different proc timings, kind of, for the effect. So for instance, the hammer takes fewer hits to proc this effect than, say, the chain blades would. And because these weapons are so good, you can actually make whatever you want to. So this is the point where I would suggest making whatever kind of weapon you'd want, since the Hellion weapons are going to be really good for any weapon you want to make. If it's the axe, hammer, sword, warpike, chain blades, it's all going to work really well with it. Now, I would still suggest making a Hellion Sword, because the sword is just the jack of all trades, master of none and dauntless. It's very good at doing everything, 
but it's not the best at any one thing currently. But if you're at the point where you want to try the weapons, you can totally make the chain blades or the war pike or whatever you want to. And also, by the way, if you do want to make a war pike, I think the best early war pike is going to be the Emberman war pike. I forgot to mention that, but basically, the Emberman war pike has a similar effect to the Emberman sword, which is that your seventh hit in a row will deal 100 wound damage. And that is actually really good. And the reason is because wounds on the war pike aren't crazy good by themselves, but if you have perks like Savagery, which give you extra damage versus wounded parts up to 100% extra damage at plus 6, that will help you do better with the Warpike. Because the Warpike itself is very lackluster right now, but it is still fun to play. So using Savagery makes the Warpike more fun to play since you get faster kill times, and using the Emberman Warpike gives you faster uptime on wounds, and it can lead to a just better general experience using the Warpike in the first place. The next weapon I suggest making will be an axe, and that is the Stormclaw Axe. And the whole reason is the unique equip is insanely nice for axe in terms of quality of life. So after dodging through an attack, the next weapon attack has 100% meter gain. Now this actually has some hidden tech with it, because what you can do is dodge through an attack and proc the effect, and then create distance between the behemoth and yourself, and throw your special. Now if you're using the Flight of Ruin special, this will work really nicely because that special got changed to where, for one, when you throw it, it's on cooldown, like the cooldown starts, which is super good. And the second thing is that special, whenever it connects to a behemoth in flight, or, you know, when it's doing the boomerang thing, that will generate meter. And the nice thing is that meter generation is affected by your special on the Stormclaw Axe. So I really suggest this axe for anyone that wants to play the axe starting out, because building meter can be really rough without having good cells or good attacks around the axe, which is hard to get starting out. So this can make it so you can get meter faster and get to your stack or determination faster. Which for anyone who doesn't know, a stack of determination gives you more damage. So those are the weapons and that's the order I suggest crafting weapons in Dauntless if you want to start out the game and go really fast through the content. Doing this will get you to the end game really quickly. Oh, and when you upgrade weapons, everything about the weapon actually increases. So that goes for the stat on the weapon, the power of the weapon, and even the unique equip bonus on the weapon. So for instance, the Hellion Sword gets plus three overpower at plus 10, and also gets 500 power, and the unique equip hits for 250 blaze damage instead of 100 at base level. So as you upgrade, it gets better and better, and the upgrade levels right now are, when you first create it, that's a, you know, an increased bonus to your stat and your unique equip. Whenever you upgrade it to plus 6, that's again another increase, and the last increase for your stat and unique, and unique equip is going to be at plus 10. Going to plus 15 is not a big deal. It only gives you like plus, like it gives you like 6% increased power for the weapon, for what I've been told. Not a huge deal. So the soft cap in this game is going to be plus 10. For anyone that's curious about, oh, this game's going to be super grindy, you don't have to get plus 15 for your gear or your weapon. It's mainly just a small bonus for the players that are playing this game all the time anyway, such as myself. Like, I maxed out all the gear previously before the changes, and I'm going to do it again. It's just a matter of time. But that's, that, that change is mostly for someone like me and just players in that sort of mindset. Now one thing I forgot to mention is the fact that crafting a variety of weapons and even gear up to plus 10 will give you more mastery XP and you need mastery XP to unlock the ability to upgrade certain gear past a certain level. You don't need a whole lot of it, but you do need a schmidgen, just a little bit in the beginning. But at a certain point, I would suggest just playing all the weapons you can, upgrading random weapons, and just having a good time and playing random stuff. You don't have to follow the meta, and all the weapons I listed aren't exactly meta per se. The Hellion weapons are for sure meta. Everything else is just, you know, what I suggest. And again, these are my, these are my suggestions. You can do whatever you want, but if you want to have someone's advice playing this game for a year, this is it. A lot of you have been asking, like, what weapons should I make, so this is my video for that. But that is basically the end of this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, leave a like. If you want to, subscribe to the channel for Dallas content. And maybe consider checking me out on Twitch. I'm a Dallas partner. I stream there very regularly. And I know a lot about the game. And aside from that, if you guys are going to make purchases on the Epic Games Store, consider using my code. It's Odo. If you do, I'd appreciate it. Honestly, it'd be, I'd really appreciate it. And I appreciate all the folks that have done that so far. You're actually insane. Thank you so much. But guys, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.